there is a often used university joke which says, never put a dean behind the microphone. <laughs> Good evening. Dobra vecher. Goraften. Hyvä ilta kaikille. Languages. Languages. Let the word roll through your tongue. Languages are how we speak to each other, how we educate each other, how we build our culture and how we understand our identity. I believe that the Fulbright program is fundamentally based upon language. We recognize James Polshek tonight and in doing so we recognize a language of architecture. Madam President, Fulbright honorees, Fulbright Association members, Fulbright grant recipients, Fulbright family members, one and all, good evening. My name is Peter McKeith, as you now know. It's my privilege to introduce the consummate architect and educator James Polshek as a 2019 Fulbright Association Lifetime Achievement Award recipient. To Mr. Polshek and his honored colleagues and to you all, I bring greetings and best wishes from the Ozark Plateau of Northwest Arkansas, from the city, or some would say hamlet, of Fayetteville, and from the University of Arkansas, which is to say from the geography, the childhood home, and the University of Senator J. William Fulbright, where I currently live and work as Dean of the Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design at that university. In this good place, each day, I am able to marvel at the peace fountain on our campus designed and constructed by the Arkansas-born AIA gold medalist winner Faye Jones in honor of Senator Fulbright and his vision of peace through international education. Each day, too, I marvel at the transformative journey in architecture and education that a 1990 Fulbright Fellowship in Finland projected me into and each day, I'm privileged to extend the benefits of that fellowship to the next generation of architects and educators from the office that I sit in, which is the very office that then University of Arkansas president, a young, very young, Bill Fulbright sat in while he was president of the University of Arkansas from 1939 to 1941. Like many of us, maybe all of us in this room, I am haunted by the ghost of Bill Fulbright. <laughs> we all have our Fulbright journeys to be sure, but the journey of James Polshek that we celebrate and recognize this evening is truly one of lifelong achievement, not simply in architecture and education, but in the greater cause of building our culture tangibly, materially, and of thereby building our futures. James Polshek was born in Akron, Ohio in 1930, and after an undergraduate conversion, like, oh, Saul becoming Paul on the road to Damascus from medicine to architecture at Case Western Reserve, he earned a Master of Architecture from Yale University in 1955. In 1956, as you will soon hear, he received a Fulbright Hayes Grant to research modular, industrialized, prefabricated housing in Denmark and that experience was transformative and enduring. He returned to work in New York for I.M. Pei, a fellow of the American Institute of Architects, among others, whose east wing of the National Gallery graces Washington, D.C., and then started his own firm, James Stewart Polshek Architect, in 1963. And over the last 54 years, that firm, now 55 years, that firm, which was rebranded recently as ENIAD Architects, has carried out countless projects with a particular focus on cultural and restoration work, as well as education, civic, and commercial spaces. All told, that firm's work has garnered more than 200 design awards, 15 national AIA honor awards, and the 1992 AIA Architecture Firm of the Year Award. That in and of itself is no small accomplishment. And yet, while continuing to lead his practice, 
Jim also served as Dean of Columbia University's Graduate School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation from 1972 to 1987. I can tell you, I am now in the sixth year of my deanship. I'm not sure that I will get to year seven, let alone year 15. But in doing so, oversaw a dramatic revision of that school's curriculum, elevated that school's reputation nationally and internationally. Jim's approach to design, which emphasizes deep client engagement. He speaks with his clients, not at them. Emphasizes collaborative methods. He works to engage younger architects and, and disciplines well outside of architecture. And in formal terms, a thoughtful use of transparency, an opacity of form, and an insistence on the materiality and craft of construction. All of this has been showcased in projects that you may well know but have never understood as being of his authorship. Scandinavia House in New York City on Park Avenue. The American Museum of Natural History's Rose Center for Earth and Space in New York. The Museum in Washington, yes, soon to become, or maybe already is, property of Johns Hopkins University, but they too are overseeing its renovation and renewal. The National Museum of American Jewish History in Philadelphia, perhaps now closest to my heart besides Scandinavia House, the William J. Clinton Presidential Center in Little Rock, Arkansas, completed in 2004 on the banks of the Arkansas River. In 2018, James Polchek was recognized himself by the AIA with its highest individual honor, the AIA Gold Medal. The observations of my colleagues in the AIA at that time remain vibrant still and applicable here this evening. Robert Ivey, the CEO and Executive Vice President of the AIA said, James Polshek has had a remarkably generous career. He's empowered generations of students through Columbia University and also through his practice has brought together talented architects and allowed them to do their very best work. In his own role as architect, critic, and teacher, that studio has grown and flourished, so his legacy is broad. His sensitivity as an architect and his willingness to give credit to others, whether they be clients, staff, or collaborators, have restored the promise that architecture can be an uplifting force in the world. Everywhere that he has worked and throughout his eloquent writings, he has raised the level of discussion while pursuing an unambiguous goal of architecture as a healing art. Now, Jim and I have spoken recently about our common love for Scandinavia and the Nordic region. And one of our common heroes, the Finnish architect Alvar Aalto, himself an AIA gold medalist and a great admirer of the promise of the United States, once said that, quote, architecture may not be able to save the world, but perhaps it can set us all a small example. Jim Polshek is that optimist, that craftsman, that healer through design, who has set us all so many small examples, and sometimes rather large examples, in the language of architecture. Thank you. Tak, kitos, falavarn. Ladies and gentlemen, James Polshek. Peter, aw shucks, <laughs> it was really beautifully put, and, and uh, John Bader, I want to thank first, uh, really I would say foremost because he put up with me and uh, changes of schedule and his precision and uh, self-discipline uh, it's just remarkable and uh, kept me on the, the open track and uh, I'm so happy to be with you. I, I, I do want to thank the president of the association 
and the many board members that I met but far too briefly this evening uh, before we entered this room. Uh, I don't know quite where to begin, but when I was told of this honor, which, which, uh, which is really profound, uh, I didn't think that I would necessarily say a few words, but I'm going to make it few because I'm sandwiched sandwich between uh, Melissa Black and Madam President, uh, which is a delicious place to be, but, uh, <laughs> but, but not in terms of public speaking. Um, when I applied for the, uh, decided to apply for the Fulbright, uh, well, at Yale in I, probably 1954, 50, a little bit later, um, I had been told already that two of my classmates had applied to Italy and to France. And uh, while I'm competitive, I'm respectful of those I compete with. And I said, well, um, that's what I thought we'd go. And then I discovered that there was no language requirement for Denmark. <laughs> thank, thank heaven. <clears throat> and I applied, and I, it was hard to, to believe that uh, it, it happened. I had been married only for a couple of years to my darling wife of the last 67, 68 years, I think. It, it works. It, um, and uh, we didn't quite know exactly what we were getting into. And uh, so after an 11 day journey on uh, the Rhine Dam, the Holland American ship, not a very big one, uh, over the Atlantic in early January, <laughs> we certainly were happy to see dry land. And we were met uh, when we got off the train in Copenhagen by two or three other Fulbrighters. Uh, one who uh, has remained uh, friends till this very day. She at that time was a political scientist. Later, be Helen Searing, as her name, became a, a Brown professor of art history at Smith College for many, many years. Uh, so you meet great people, and that's where the adventure started. I've neglected in the many thanks uh, to directly address those thanks to Ellen Polchek, who gave me the advice to take an opportunity when faced with it and follow it through to the logical end and the two extraordinary children that came down today uh, who also have guided many of the decisions, life decisions that I've had to make and have been, I would say, most usually correct. That's Peter Polchek, uh, who came down with his friend Catherine Chermayev and Jennifer Polchek, the librarian of the world, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> who is shaking her head saying, shut up. <laughs> I, it was... Uh, it, it's trite, but it was a it was a life changing experience because it wasn't just about architecture; it was about the way people treat other people. Uh, but the fundamental importance of kindness, and these, and many other considerations, really guided me through. Um, the profession. I'd gotten through school. I began to develop a certain set of beliefs at that time that were both cultural and political. 
uh, I'll just diverge for one minute to say that while I was had finished three years of a pre-medical curriculum, I, before I switched to architecture, I woke up one day and realized that making buildings is also a social and political statement. Uh, it has to do with place. Peter, in that extraordinary sermon of an introduction, uh, noted the, the complexities of this and the misunderstanding of what an architect does. But I've always tried to keep that balance, uh, that whatever you put on the earth, whatever physical thing has to serve some higher purpose. And I've always been concerned that that's too, too preachy, but uh, I've also believed from those buildings that Peter mentioned and many, many others uh, that, uh, that it is true. So I'm not going to carry on for very long, but I thought since my life has been one devoted to the visual, uh, that I would speak less and look at pictures. <laughs> this is the opening to a ch one of 16 chapters in a book that I uh, that was published about four years ago, five, maybe five years ago, called Build Memory. Um, don't just Google it, because if you do, you're going to get books about how the brain can be healthy. <laughs> I didn't mean that, but, uh, <laughs> but this was the opening, and each opening of every one of those projects, which I wish I could go through all of them with you, because I never tire of looking at them also, uh, are emblematic of the things I remembered. Uh, from the place. The building is there and the building uh, many years after coming back was Scandinavia House which is the Nordic Center's uh, cultural center for the all five of the countries many of which I was familiar with but coming to Copenhagen at that age uh, was really covered here in the sky, which is not so often that blue and that clear and that sunny, but the colors have make up for it. Uh, it is the vernacular that is important. Can I have the next, please? Um, and that vernacular for me was what some would refer to as the folk architecture of Scandinavia, not just Denmark necessarily, uh, in the craft and I have carried on in public, often to architects more than I should, my belief that architecture is not an art form. It is a craft. And as a craft, it deals with a whole different set of circumstances. Uh, the consideration of architecture as an art um, is misleading and in fact can be extremely subversive. So not, it was not just the vernacular, but the two architects, uh, Alto uh, on the right and uh, Arne Jakobsen there next to his school. Uh, Alto had done one of his earliest buildings, the sanitarium at Paimio. Uh, really one of the first observations I made that enforced a belief about modernism as a positive factor, but it didn't necessarily mean that you were going to walk away from architecture of the past or the modification of it. Next. Um, this is uh, three photographs of Louisiana, the great museum north of Copenhagen, uh, the existing uh, manor house that's still part of the complex, and then a couple of views of the galleries, many of which are buried partially underground, connected by glass walkways, uh, a museum designed or co-designed uh, by an architect named Willem Vollert, uh, 
uh, who was my tutor when I got to Copenhagen for the Fulbright at the Royal Academy of Fine Arts. All of it led almost directly many years later to being selected for this commission, which I wanted so desperately. I, architects uh, have to prepare without telling people exactly what it's going to be. Uh, so that, that sketch on the left that I, I made on uh, just yellow tracing paper began to put notations together of what the final facade is. The facade, of course, is on the right. And for me, uh, putting the uh, metallic interpretations of the five flags there permanent, permanently, something is, I'm getting too close to this, that's all. Uh, so it was, it was a, a journey from 1956, when my wife and I arrived in, in, in Denmark to, and I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the date of this, but it was sometime in the early 80s, I believe, and it's held up very well. And it stands there as a symbol of a, a conviction about the modern that still absorbs and pays attention to what people define as uh, respect. I wish I could go on and talk about many other th buildings. I could go on forever. Um, but uh, with the generosity of Peter's introduction, as, uh, as well as the nice words that Mary Ellen uh, lavished on me, I think the time has come to say thank you all for your patience in watching this, and uh, congratulations to my two uh, fellow uh, recipients, and to all of you who full are Fulbrighters. I thank you all. Thank you.